Hey guys. Well, that is a sexy voice. You can probably tell I am sick, but I really wanted to get this video out, so please bear with me. I hope you will understand me. <laughs> Believe me, it sounds worse than it is. I am back with another video and today I'm sharing my wrap up for all the books I have read in September. I finished 14 books, all from 2 stars to 5 stars and I had quite a few very close to 5 star ratings too. I have a lot to share today. First let's work on the cover page. I was left with this weird one page from last month setup and I was hesitating to work on this page and honestly I almost skipped this page. But I decided to take this challenge and do something fun with this page. It was not easy because the page next to it is quite bold and colorful. And I had a big plan for nice painting and all, but I got sick and I had no energy for painting, so I designed this simple border of books in Canva and I did a simple Dutch door that will reveal more books and some overall statistics, but we're not there yet. I like how this border is cute and colorful and complements the left page, but it is still a thing on its own. I only edit a very simple September title and that's it. Next let's glue in few reading statistics. I thought it would be cute to have these big books on the side of the page and it looks so good with the cover page on top. So. I read a lot, but that's because I read 6 volumes of manga, but I also finished few very chunky books. I read little over 2500 pages and listened to over 78 hours of audiobooks, which then translates to 142 pages per day. And that is awesome. I also edit pages per book statistics, which turned out to be 304. Then it came to adding book covers to the spread and I absolutely did not think it through. I was left with these two awkward and narrow pages and 14 book covers to fit in. <laughs> so I put all the manga volumes on one side and the rest on the other. It is not the most elegant solution, but here we are. And lastly, I edit star ratings next to all the covers just to fill in the pages. Now let's quickly do the reading statistics. I edit a bit of distant paper here because I remembered I actually had some and I should have used that on previous pages, but well, it's too late. I won't be going over all the statistics here, but they will be shared on my Instagram, so you can get a better look there if you'd like, and the link is always in the description. Everything I read in September was fiction, of course, and I have some new genre in my stats this month. Six books were fantasy, of course, as well as manga, but I did also read one horror and one thriller. Two books were standalones and ten were part of a series and out of those I finished one series, one I am all caught up on. I started two new series and I read eight books in already started series. The oldest book I read was from 1998 and the rest were pretty recent. I forgot to make my rating chart, I did pretty well. My average rating is 4.14, which is amazing and I just noted it down in the corner. Now let's talk about the books I actually finished in September. Let's start with the Spy Family manga. Okay, I have totally not told this through properly and I do not have enough space for star ratings, but whatever. I've heard a lot about this manga and I finally decided to give it a chance while being incredibly bored at work. And that does not happen that often. For anyone who does not know about this manga yet, it is about a spy who gets tasked with finding himself a wife and a child in a week for one of the jobs. And somehow he ends up with assassin woman and a telepathic kid. And the whole thing is just cute and wholesome. 
There was one volume I did not enjoy as much, but the rest was pretty awesome and I hope I will catch up on the released volumes by the end of this year. Next is a battery with my friends and we picked an oldie, which is of A. Lanan by Kate Forsyth and let me tell you, it was not as bad as it could have been. The story is set in a world where magic became forbidden by an evil queen and those who are caught practicing witchcraft are put to death. We follow numerous witches and creatures, I guess, who are trying to restore magic to the land and get rid of the wicked queen. I enjoyed some parts, but it was slow and we got way too many POVs I was not interested in and the dialogue is written in some kind of dialect and only thing it accomplished is to make it more difficult to read. I give it 3 stars and I probably won't read more from this series. Next book, Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield was quite a letdown for me. Except it's great cover, I honestly don't think I can find a positive thing about this one. Guys, I am still mad for torturing myself to finish this book and it was not worth it. Despite this book being only a little over 200 pages long, it felt like a never-ending stream of mini-stories written on napkins after a few drinks and author was so proud of them, no one was able to persuade them they are not needed in the book. All that combined with narrative of one desperately annoying woman trying to take care of the other silent one whose body is leaking stuff. Even few interesting things happening quickly started to feel boring and repetitive. I gave this one generous two stars. It just did not work well for me. Now let's jump to one of my favorite reads of September, If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. The story is told by Oliver, who has just served 10 years in jail for a murder he may or may not have committed. And on the day he's released, he's greeted by the detective who put him in prison. And he is retiring, but before he does, he wants to know what really happened a decade ago. There are seven, I think, characters and I do have a problem with being introduced to that many characters all at once. It took me a while to be able to distinguish them and I still remember only our main character the hooker and the roommate. There were three more, I guess, but they just blended into one for me. And I totally forgot this was supposed to have something to do with Shakespeare and I was surprised it was not easy to read for me, but yeah, I still had an amazing time. I was immediately sucked into the story and every time I opened the book I kept reading along into the night which did not happen to me for a long time. It was immersive and engaging and I loved the atmosphere. One thing that did not work well for me was the last sentence. Just no. <laughs> if you commit to something, commit. I will pretend the last sentence was not there and I can be happily and properly heartbroken by the story now. Thank you very much. The Lost Metal, the last book in the Mistborn Era 2 series and guys, this was my favorite from the series solely because I loved seeing all worlds and stories and books come together and noticing the connections. I am so glad I read all the short stories before this one because I was able to catch on so much. Dawn Shard is also by Brandon Sanderson and I love this one too. This book is meant to be read between Oldbringer and Rhythm of War, which I did, and it is about two side characters I was quite interested in but never thought I'd read about them in one story, Reason and Lopen. At first I was not entirely sure about this, but I got to love Reason more and more with each page, and Lopen's humor is just the best, I had a great time. Next is the longest book I have ever read and that will stay true for probably a long time. Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson of course. It's the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series and 
now I am officially caught up on all cosmic stuff. I definitely felt the length of this book, but listening to the audio version definitely helped. And I can't wait for the next one to be released. Lastly, there are two short stories from the Cosmir, the Six of the Dusk and Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell. And I liked both of them a lot. These were nothing I expected and way darker in tone. And I'd like to read more stories from these worlds. And that's it. These are all the books I have finished in September. And I will do a quick flip through so you can see how this all turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video despite this terrible voiceover. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments how many books you read in September or your favorites or disappointments if you want. I would love to hear. Thank you so much for being here. Have an absolutely awesome day. See you next time. Bye.